Maximilian, town planning in New Zealand, needs to be, is way, way out of date. And the, one of the expressions used was rituals of people coming together. At the moment, it seems government, aided and abetted by the Transport Authority, is wrapped up in bringing vehicles together. And then they get congestion, and they say, but it's all congestion, but they never can, of course. So I'm wondering if what you've been saying about rituals of people coming together and these kind of prototypes that you've been developing, whether that can somehow be fed into the town planning process. Would anyone like to take that? I can have a go. <laughs> um, I think there's probably quite a lot of um, conflict around that um, playing out at the moment. Um, certainly my sense of the Christchurch City Council is that they'd be much more supportive of what you're saying, but um, there are constraints. Part of, some of those are just economic and um, property ownership constraints, and some of them are having a big overbearing government agency restricting their ability to do what they need to. Um, but certainly I think there needs to be a very radical change in how transport's treated in New Zealand. But I mean, while saying that, I've, we've talked to some of the, we're, we're start embarking on another big publishing project which will have a whole set of essays around this sort of stuff. And the, talking to the transport prof, um, experts, they think the Sierra Plan is actually pretty good for the Christchurch so that, that There's a few things that ideally would have been done, but they tick most of the boxes pretty well. There'll be maximum speeds of 30 kilometres an hour. It's a huge bit of cycling network. There's the government spending $80 million, on, uh, sorry, the council spending $80 million on cycling lanes happening over the next three years, so with a bit of luck, price stretch actually might lead the way there. Can I add a bit more? Go for it. Presumably this, the uh, transitional city, that whole project will continue for some years and the whole nature and scope of it will develop in that process. And that would be very good for the whole country, it seems to me. Um, I agree. I think it is going to be a long time. I remember in the early days after the February earthquake, um, I think it was in March, nearly immediately thinking this is going, this is so huge and noting the government's approach um, to demolish, like that was the solution, instant response was to demolish, thinking this is going to take the rest of my lifetime for the city to recover. Um, which I think is why a number of us are so passionate about being involved, is that it is an ongoing, evolving process. And one thing that the transitional sort of community has been discussing lately in Christchurch is the relationship between what we do, which is often very temporary, um, and its relationship to the top-down heavy planning process. And I think, you know, we've got an election this year. Um, it'll be interesting to see how and when and where we can have an influence on that planning process. I think it, it really is a matter of um, watch the space. Hi. Hi, um, my name is Hannah. I've been at the Wellington Time Week, so a lot of what we try to achieve is encouraging sort of public participation and ownership of spaces around Wellington. And I just wanted to ask um, how, how you sort of go about encouraging I think uh, for Lives itself, you know, since we're not the um, project participants, more just in the background. Well, actually, I'll back up. Before Lives even started, um, I had my master's in urban planning, and I'd heard about Renew Newcastle. We had Marcus Westbury come over and um, talk to us about Renew um, when Gat Filler was preparing the report for council and suggesting that Lives be created. Um, and I remember asking him a question, well, you know, like, where do these people come from? Like, how do you, you know, get people to turn in project proposals? And, and he just kind of laughed, and, and he's like, you know, if you have a vacant space, there will be a million ideas. And, I mean, still, I get, like, a couple proposals every day. So I think there is, it's not even about you know, like attracting the, the public, it's like they, they kind of just come. <laughs> I don't know if that answers, but I think 
there needs to be more done around spreading awareness because even when there is like a project there and there might be like a small community of people or a small group of people organizing it, it, it is hard to spread the word because Christchurch right now is quite um, fractured, I feel like. There's not as much communication. And so I guess in, in that sense, I don't really have the answer of of how to spread the word, but I but I do know that you know proposals and come in like people do definitely just want to be involved. Um, just to echo what Bree says, nearly all the projects that lives uh, facilitates and that we're involved in, the public, uh, they're all publicly minded and they're all accessible. So every single one of those projects that you saw has been open to the public. Um, they've also, um, depending on the project, they've been a the public are able to enter them at different stages. So not just as an audience, but um, early on in the process often. So Gap Filler, for example, last week they've had a public call for, a, for participation in a project called Inconvenience Store. Anyone could have put their hand up and said, hey, I've got an idea that relates to that. So most of the projects are involve public participation, often early in the project, not just at the end as an audience. Um, and even then, they're often a, an amenity or a, a service. Um, that's available for the public. I mean, one of my favourite projects isn't even possible without a public response, the Gatfiller Dancer Mat. Um, I think it's my favourite transitional project of all time. You know, it's some speakers and lights and a washing machine uh, and a dance floor and you can put $2 in the washing machine and, and plug in your MP3 player and you can dance on the dance floor for half an hour. Um, the project doesn't make sense without public participation. Does that answer your question, Heather? Oh, no, I was going to say, I'm just going to add a slightly contrary perspective because just from a regular perspective, we've done sort of, we've had to sort of do the opposite, which I was alluding to that I'm frustrated by, that we've had to sort of shut down the blinkers on just to, to achieve our mission and grow to scale as a social enterprise. It's been really difficult because I get a lot of emails all the time of people wanting to engage. We, we don't have the capacity to do that as, as well as our day-to-day -day business. So I think um, that's our, our mission as an enterprise is to grow to, to, to a scale where we can do more of that. Um, but uh, that's kind of the path we chose. Yeah, yeah and the other, um, I think publics are very intelligent at responding to what needs there are. So if you wander through Christchurch City at the moment, it's obvious that there's this enormous potential and need. But then other things like the student volunteer, I mean, I think more recently have really struggled to get volunteers when it was extraordinary the work they did in the months after the way and the public responded to that need. But then the sort of institutional momentum got ahead of the public, I think, for the student volunteer. I mean, now they're sort of reconfiguring after realising that. So it's not like there's just this open slammer of public everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose to add to that, my concern has been that some of, some of the solutions, the, some of the serious solutions that have been needed, say, around waste, that volunteerism isn't enough of a solution. Um, so that's Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I would like to thank all our first speakers, Jessica and Juliet and Bree and Barnaby. Um, it's been really great listening to hear about your creativity and sense of community and enterprise and energy. Um, really interesting to hear your stories, so thank you very much. <laughs>